Jay Glazer was the one who reported at the beginning of the season that no matter what happened this season, even if it ended up in a Super Bowl podium, that it would be no longer Jim Harbaugh's team to coach after this season. And you just heard him say to go speak to Jay Glazer about his sources, about what's going to happen with his career. So, thankfully, that's the way we roll on the Rich Eisen Show. We just turn to Jay Glazer. Jay, Jim asked me to ask you, so I ask you, what about Jim Harbaugh's future? He's asking me to reveal my sources. The only person who reveals their sources in this league is Aaron Cromer. <laughs> <laughs> None of Glazer's sources out themselves. So uh, Here's the crazy thing, too. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Fans want information. All right? Fans are more educated now than they ever have been before, no doubt. And they want information as fast as they could possibly get it, but as, um, as accurate as they want. And then when you give them the information they don't want to hear, they get all ticked off about it, and they say the same thing, too. Reveal your sources. Folks, we're not revealing our sources. Don't ask us to reveal our sources. That is the dumbest thing in the world. Okay, yeah, let me, let me betray someone's trust because you guys are ticked. And look, I, I get it. I get why Niner fans are upset because this guy's had an awful lot of success there. But there's a reason why me and so many others have said it heading into the season that this is almost ordained, that the marriage is just, you know, it's over. It's, uh, you know, they've, they've gone to couples therapy as much as they could, and it's just time to find another relationship. Well, and I, I've said in the past, that's what Bill Parcells is so masterful in, is he knew what his shelf life was. And he cashed in on that shelf life. And I think that Jim Harbaugh, he realizes that too, he could cash in every three or four years, go to a place, come in there, be a mercenary, build it up and move on. But you eventually, you know, you just wear on players so much and you wear on people in the building so much, you know, it ends up um, being where you just want to go to work and, and it not to be a miserable existence. What? So, you know, people, 49er fans, I get it. I get they're, they're saying, look, it's, you know, we've had so much success. Why can't we just, you know, mull this over. It's not just with Jim in the front office. Okay, it never has been. And, you know, even players, it, the worst sinking ships in this league, players don't come out and say what they want about their head coach. All right, Jim is, a, Jim is one of the finest football coaches in this league. But, you know, he'd be smart to, to realize, hey, I'm going to be a mercenary and I'm going to go and do my thing for three and four years and I'm going to cash in every three or four years. Well, uh, Jay, there's so many different ways I want to go with this one. Number one is if you cash in every three or four years, that's how you could do it in the NFL. Obviously, in college, the players change every three or four years. So you stay there, the players change, and you're, you're just like in uh, the end of Officer and a Gentleman when you saw Lewis Gossett Jr. using the same lines on his new recruits as he did with Richard Gere. It's the same oh, all thing. All the movies, that's where you're, you're really going, Officer and a Gentleman? Are you... I what are hey, you, Jay. like an 88-year-old Jewish lady? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Our Glazer. audience is an officer and a gentleman. Jay Glazer, what better analogy could you use than the one I just used about having your shtick be new to new people every single time in a cycle as opposed to those who leave? I didn't start saying, come lift us up where we belong, where I carry you in my arms through the factory. You're killing me. So we go off in the sunset together to the late Joe Cocker's song. I didn't say that, Jay. You're killing me here. You know, a, a crazy sidebar to that, by the way, Sure. is David Keith, from yeah. Officer and a Gentleman, guy right. who hung himself, Yes. ended up, me and Strahan used to live in this apartment building up in, in New York City. Well, I was kind of squatting there because I had no money. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were staying with somebody else, this other gal, and, and David <laughs> Keith ended up living there, too. He was like this big Tennessee booster, right? Yeah. And he was living there, and there was like five other like French models there. This is a whole other reality show. I can't even get into it. See, now this is more interesting than the Jim Harbaugh discussion, in my mind. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. You know, I it, mean, was, uh, it was an interesting time. It was fun. All right, Glaze. So I want to touch on a couple of things with the Harbaugh thing. That we're, Nobody's really talking about the end game and how it works. You know, somebody even asked him that. Do we have that sound of one of the greatest sound bites of all time? Somebody asked Jim Harbaugh what happens next, and he gave one of the most great non-answers of all time. What, what will happen will happen. What... What won't happen, won't happen. What will happen, will happen. What won't happen, won't happen, Jay. So what is going to happen come Monday? How does this whole end game work out with college, with uh, Michigan pulling at them and uh, Oakland reporting them pulling at them? What do you think? You know, I can't tell you about the Michigan thing. I thought if, I think if he was going to take Michigan, he would have done it by now. I don't know. But I don't know about college, so I can't tell you. Sure. I don't know that game. All I can tell you is, you know, at first, you know, look, if someone wants to trade for Jim Harbaugh, this is the week to call them. 
and I'm a, you know, off the record, you don't want to tamper, whatever it is, um, but this is the week to do it. And yeah, they're not going to let this linger on and on and on. But why would a team, Jay, why would a team offer up draft picks when they know from your report back in September divorce is coming? Why would they give the 49ers anything except wait for the 49ers to fire him? I agree with you. I'm just saying if somebody does want to say so we don't want him to hit the open market, let's right. kind of work this thing. Sure. That's the way you do it and, you know, work out a deal with Jim so he doesn't even do that. And, um, you know, because one, the one thing they could do, like, look, if you really want to say we're going to play this hand right, and they go, we're getting rid of him, but you know what? We're going to trade you. If you don't want to get traded, um, they don't agree to it, then fine, we'll just hold on to you. And it kind of goes back what the Chargers did to Marty. I mean, they can still hold on to you as long as they want. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, get rid of you at any time they want. I, I don't think they're going to do that. That's their one. That's the one card they could hold, but I don't see them holding that card. I just think they realize it's just time to move on. And the other thing, too, is, look, the, the offense just isn't responding to him anymore. If you want to blame him, want to blame Roman, whoever it is, he's brought in for that offense from the quarterback. And the quarterback has unfortunately digressed, and he has too much talent to digress. Jay Glazer of Fox Sports and Fox Sports Radio joining me right now. Where do you stand? Where do you, let's put it this way, where do you think John Fox and the uh, Broncos stand on the issue of resting Peyton Manning one more week based on this conversation of his arm strength uh, from last night's game, Jay? Hey, here's the thing, too. It's not the arm strength. Okay, and, I, and I said on Fox NFL Sunday, Peyton's listed as questionable with a thigh bruise, and it's not a fake questionable. He is hurting this week. And, and he already doesn't have the greatest arm strength when it's cold or wet, but he was hurting. And, and I don't know why people I, – I think people look at any time you put a guy like that as questionable, it's, they almost like Belichick him. Well, it's just, you know, they're trying to mess with somebody. Foxy's not trying to mess with Marvin Lewis. All right, the guy really legitimately his, – his thigh has a, has a, you know, a deep thigh bruise there. Um, and he was, he was pushing through this week, man. I, I, I don't want to minimize how much he actually had to fight through this week. Uh, and uh, Sean Payton in, in New Orleans, there's already talk about maybe him parting ways there. Do you think that there's any chance of that happening this offseason, Jay? Absolutely not. What, parting ways there? He's owed like $24 million. Absolutely not. Are you kidding me? Okay. You think they're going to – who said that? I don't know. I mean, there's people who think that the, what, what, what just happened there this, this year, that, that it's not working there, and that perhaps what, whatever may happen in the rest of the NFL landscape, he has some wanderlust to go somewhere else, maybe just next door. You really think that Tom Benson would, would sit there and eat $24 million, and because of one season, they struggle? I mean, look at the success the guys had. No, absolutely. Okay. I don't know where that's been. The Sean Payton will absolutely 100 million percent not be fired in New Orleans. That's like... That, that's beyond bizarre. Before I let you go, Jay, everybody uh, in our business does a holiday story around this time of year um, and, uh, for just showing about the human emotion that sports can deliver and, uh, and joy. And your uh, Fox NFL Sunday, an incredible story this week about the Touchdown Dreams charity that you uh, have to hook up terminally ill kids with athletes. Uh, I'm going to give you the floor to tell the story that you told that some might not have seen on Sunday, Jay. I appreciate it. You know, Rich, I, I've actually had this program very quietly for about eight years. Um, Rondé Barber, and actually John Gruden, he doesn't even know it. They're the first guys I ever helped, uh, had helped me out. And for eight years, I, I look, I didn't want anybody to know. I just kind of didn't want to do a look at me thing, and I've tried to use my relationships. Yeah, I use them for sources, but man, God has blessed me with this unbelievable life. And I, I years ago, I'm like, I got to do something to, to give back. So I started using all these contacts of mine to help out children who are um, who are fighting for their lives. And but I tell you, you know, you hear all this bad off the field stuff with players and, and whatnot, but there's so much good that is done by the guys in this league, and people have no idea. I mean, we had a I had a kid a couple of years ago, man, Andy Reid, got this guy a game jersey and had him walk out the tunnel with the team. And unfortunately, he got the, the chemo and radiation um, kind of took its toll that night. And mm. this kid has actually, though, had a full recovery and is pitching down in uh, Rowan College. Um, we've had children who are, you know, made complete recoveries because I, I, I match them up with these players and coaches and, and they kind of cheer them, all, you know, cheer them on along the way. And I keep in contact. And do whatever I can and just try to give them a great moment. So this week, um, there's a family out in Vegas uh, named the Urea family. And this little girl named Ava Urea, 
She's four years old, man. She's had, you know, countless oh, surgeries, Lord. heart surgeries already. She was yeah, born we're, see, we're seeing the pictures here now, and, and uh, Menelik Watson donated his uh, check. So, so what happened was I sent him out there, and I, you know, Tony Sperano, I, I called him, and I met with Justin Tuck, actually, to really bring her out and give her and her family the greatest, you know, a great weekend for them, and just to tell them out. And not only did they... They, they welcomed her, making her captain of the team for the, for the weekend and with gifts and stuffed animals and signed helmets and signed football. And they, she broke down the team. She had lunch with everybody. Menelik Watson, who was so moved, please look this guy up. He was so moved that he walked up to her dad and said, here is my game check oh for the week, Lord. which was $36,000. Okay, and after taxes, down to 18, whatever it is. It's, it's, game, it's a week's salary for this man. And football players only get paid 17 weeks a year. That's it. Yeah. And he gave her his salary. He actually just texted me right before the show asking for, for Dad's number again. And he just said, look, I want Ava to have the best holiday you guys can give her. Well, And God bless him and the Raiders. No and doubt, Jay. And, God, and hey, let me help me out with this. And, you know, again, I never talked about it, but what Medellin did, I, it's time I, you know, I need to get him the proper – love for it because it's just that's what you're supposed to do man yep and you know, let me give it to you is, let me give it to it you too count, but when you can do stuff like this it really does let me give it to you too jay bless you for that bud and Thank um, you, buddy. i appreciate it man. and, Thank and you guys. of course at best to you and yours on this holiday season and uh you we're too, gonna, my brother love you guys man. same to you same to you and we're going to link out uh on the rich eisen show.com website page uh a link to that story please thank story. you you bet take care jay be well jay that's jay glazer Fox Sports Radio right here on the Rich Eisen the Show. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern. On audience.